from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Let's get started, it's time for Hot I apologize, that was a mint. Um, anyway, so word in the street is that Megyn Kelly is out at NBC. Well, here's the deal. This comes after she said that there's nothing wrong with dressing in blackface for Halloween, which to me is a thoughtless thing for such a well-read person. You know, she graduated from college, she graduated from law school, she worked her way up in the ranks, it's difficult to talk about race, but it's very, very easy. The, the most baseline thing is you don't say something like that. And, and she tried to compare it in some ways to like the Countess Luann, when Countess dressed as Diana Ross <laughs> with a deep tan. But Megan, she's a housewife. I'm not saying that she's smaller than you, but in terms of academia and what people expect from you, you're not supposed to compare yourself to what a housewife does. <laughs> Quite frankly, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, you know, is she hireable? Probably. She'll go away and then she'll come back. She'll get hired someplace, mm-hmm, sure. And besides, if she's not hireable, listen, she's the highest paid person over at that network, $23 million. <laughs> For a multi-year deal. Wait, wait, hold on now. Hold on, I've just been passed something through my teleprompter. $69 million. <laughs> For only three years. Look, oh, yeah, hold, hold <laughs> Hoda's getting seven million. And um, so what do I think? I don't feel sorry for Megyn Kelly. I mean, she wanted to jump into daytime TV and I think she wanted to be more likable and stuff, but there's certain things that don't fly with certain people. You know, like she's not the fun girl. We're the fun girl, yeah. you know? And every once in a while, something might slip out of my mouth, but I apologize to you all. <laughs> and you might laugh at it and be mad at me for three days, but then you come back. Thank you. <laughs> so I was watching The Bold and the Beautiful. <laughs> with a Carla Hall oxtail, I might add. <laughs> Extra garlic extra hot sauce, and I heated up her lima bean salad. I didn't like it cold, I like it heated up, you know? Heated up, put it around the oxtail, put it in a bowl so everything is, to, not a plate, everything spreads out, no. One oxtail, the bowl. Hair off. 
<laughs> Cause you know, when you eat the oxtail, you know you have to pick it up, right? And you get all into it. And then I'm not a marrow person, but I marrow for an oxtail. I, I, will, ma I will marrow for an oxtail. I'm poking the marrow through and I have a small glass, not a big glass, a small glass of grape juice to wash everything down at, for dessert. You know, I'm not a dessert person. And then water. So I'm watching The Bold and the Beautiful and I hear suddenly Wayne Brady has joined the show. Uh, yeah. He's gonna, listen, this is a great idea to me. He's gonna play a doctor who finds himself in a web of passion and mystery. Oh. Well, you know, he's already at the network because he hosts um, Let's Make a Deal, which I love. Oh, we, that, that's such a fun show. It just never gets old to me. People in their stupid costumes <laughs> jumping up and down. And Wayne's such a good host for that. But I guess, you know, he wanted more. He probably went to the network and said, look, I want more or something. In the meantime, he ended up bonding with the head writer at the show because he visited his 15-year-old daughter who had a guest starring role on the show. Oh. Now, my knee-jerk reaction was, but dad, this is about me. <laughs> you got a job out of this and all I am is a guest star for one show? <laughs> and then he probably said something like, look, don't worry, baby girl, uh, you know, Part of my mystery is that I do have a 15-year-old daughter, and then you'll appear. I don't, I don't know though, Wayne, man. Like, like you've got such a sweet life with that stupid show that Let's Make a Deal. Everyone loves that, and I, I mean stupid in a good way. That you've got such a sweet life. <laughs> right? With that stupid show, and you're not old, but you're oldish. The idea of memorizing lines for a soap opera, now hey, you gotta go home and memorize all this script. Ugh. Ugh. You need a girlfriend or, or something. I, I don't, I, I, I don't. <laughs> maybe, he ha maybe he does have one. I always I tease him when he comes here, you know, who are you dating, what are you doing, and so on and so forth. But you know, he likes to work. But on the soap opera with the lines, jeez. I only like to play myself, because there, no, there, there are no lines. You know, I make them up as I go along, <laughs> you know? Um, I, uh, however, I am playing the mother of a drug lord. I don't know how I'm gonna pull it off because it's a real hood tale. And, and I leave for the set, I think next week or something like that, like it's happening like now. But the mother of a drug lord, and I don't say whiff, I say whiff. Like, are you gonna buy it if I, if I talk like this Dem and Dez? Or maybe I should just be me. Yeah. me but we're in the hood. Oh. But just still talk like me? I need, to, I need to get some Ebonics going on quick. Going on quick. Happy birthday. Who you with? What you doing, N-word? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Oh. Memorizing lines and getting a black scent I, 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 <laughs> two things going on at one time, you know, I can barely do one thing at one time. Um, anyway, do you know this girl, Normani? Normani uh, Corday? Well, she doesn't want to be called the next Beyonce. Now, this is a beautiful girl. And she performed at, what, clap if you know her. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't know who she was, but you know, apparently a lot of people don't, but a lot of people do, and she's on the cusp of being great. 
So she performed at the Title Brooklyn concert on Tuesday night, and people were comparing her to Beyonce. But I'm like, I'm not comparing her to Beyonce. How many things can you do with two legs and two arms? <laughs> you know, and a head of hair. Of course, you fling your hair, you wave your arms, and do a, I don't, I, I would take the comparison as a compliment, first of all, Nwani, but she took it, I guess, as, you know, like people are insulting her. So she tweeted, well, look, sh so she tweeted out, I'm, Nor I'm Normani. I was born Normani. I will die Normani, period. Uh, people didn't like her comments and they slammed her um, and telling her you'll never reach Beyonce's status anyway. You know, Normani, I don't think of you like Beyonce. They say you have a wonderful voice, I, I don't know you. But, but you're a beautiful girl and you could be in your own lane. And Beyonce did not invent throwing her hair up and back. <laughs> and Beyonce did not invent, you know, dance moves and all that other kind of stuff. Or leotards with tights or any of that. So, but Normani idolizes Beyonce and she's put it on her social media before. She tweeted, I love Beyonce, but I'm my own person. Like, she's fighting it, she's fighting it. Just, just girl, just go along to get along. When I got this show, people were trying to tell me, oh, so now you're gonna be the next Oprah, huh? <laughs> I'm like, uh, no. I don't wanna be on TV for 25 years, <laughs> number one. And number two, cause I didn't think we'd last for even 10 years. <laughs> That, that was a defense mechanism. That was a defense mechanism. But I still don't want to be on for 25 years. I mean, we're 10 and counting now. But, you know, they tried to compare me to Oprah, I guess because I was the only black woman with, you know, hosting my own talk show. They didn't compare me to anybody else on daytime. They immediately went to the Oprah thing. I'm like, no, I never thought of that, me as Oprah. Even people who knew me from radio, my radio Wendy listeners were like, oh, so she's gonna try to be like Oprah. I'm like, no, I'll show you. I'll show you. Yeah. Nomani, what I'm saying is that you get out there and you carve your lane and people will, all, people will soon discover that you're not Oprah. You're a nopra, <laughs> say. You know? That's it. <laughs> a funny story happened at a gala with a bunch of rich people. Okay, I'll share. Okay, the Real Housewives of New York. You know, you know I love Ramona and Dorinda. She's so gentle. Well, they got in a fight. At the Angel Gala. Yeah. Thrown every year, it's the Angel Ball. I've been there a couple of times. It's very fancy. When you walk in, all you smell is money. <laughs> and all you see are money after money and real stars. Like Matthew McConaughey. I saw him there, he's like the size of Suzanne. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's bad. Yeah, yeah, Suzanne. That's terrible. He's a little man oh. with a little suit. Oh, and little hands. Yes, little oh. hands. Um, little feet. I met Dan Marino. Oh. Now let me tell you something about Dan Marino. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a good one. But you meet all kinds of people there. You know what I'm saying? Um, so Ramona invited Dorinda to the Angel Ball and told her they'd be at the same table. Well, when they arrived, they were seated separately. Well, here's how it works at the Angel Ball. First of all, the food is sumptuous. They lay it out. Everything is proper. Everybody's dressed to the nines. You don't walk in there <laughs> looking like this. <laughs> um, so Ramona, um, so Dorinda goes over to the organizers because Ramona's at one table with, you know, 10 people at a, ta at a table, 10 at a table, everyone's rich, wealthy, or so doing something. <laughs> and Dorinda marches over to the organizer and asks, why am I not sitting with my friend Ramona? 
and the organizer told her, Ramona requested the seat change. Oh. The shade of it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, excuse me. Oop. I totally believe this story. I totally believe Ramona would do something like that to hobnob with all the people at her table. You know, she, maybe she wanted to walk in with Dorinda, but she didn't want to sit with Dorinda. In the meantime, Dorinda was pissed at, that she was, you know, over at another table. Well, here's my thought. Dorinda, why do you have to go over to the organizers? Why'd you all have to neck rock and finger point in front of the fancy people and them in there? I love a gala ball. And, you know, sometimes I'll go, and he doesn't really care much. You know, he knows everything's gonna be good. You know, so I'll go myself. I mean, I've got people with me, but they're back there. They don't have a table, you know. I'm like, you all stand over there and I'm going to take my seat. <laughs> and I sit by myself uh -uh, at a table full of nine more people, everybody about something. And I love it. I love to meet new people. I love to know what they're doing. You know, being a talk show host means nothing at a gala. It's not like they're on my bra strap or anything like that. It's like, oh, that's Wendy. All right, how you and maybe doing or... or <laughs> I, uh, I'll tell you, a gala is so, Dorinda, you really missed your mark. You should have sat at your table and made friends, the fancy people with all the money and all the charitable donations and all that stuff. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And here in Manhattan, galas are always early, so you'll be home in time for the 10 o'clock news. <laughs> Easy. I totally believe that story. Totally. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, ugh, the Bravo cameras were filming everything. Oh. Which would have pissed me off as a gala attendee. Like, Denise, I don't want to be on Bravo. What is going on here? Why are there cameras? So remember the Neelys? Yes. Pat and Gina, they've been here before. Yes. Well, Pat is 54 years old. Oh. There they are, when they were in love. Yeah. Well, you know, it was Gina who asked for the divorce, and Pat was like, oh, okay. So he's 54, it's been four years since they split. But now Pat has gone on to remarry a woman. Oh. <laughs> Shut your face. <laughs> Stop laughing. Can we just show a picture of the family, please? Please, please stop. Yep, in People Magazine, this is his new family. There's Pat with his wife, Tamika. She's 39 to his 54. She already had a five-year-old. Pat does not believe in calling children step, so he considers her son their son. Beautiful. And they also have a three-month-old daughter. And they met on the Tom, Joyner's, uh, Tom Joyner cruise. <laughs> that's the funniest part of all. You know, but that's a captive audience. You know, you're cruising around with Tom for seven days. When you meet somebody and lock eyes, maybe the second day in, it's easy. And she's cute. Yeah. And the family looks adorable. Yeah. And for, to me, I would think that this is so painful for Gina. <clears throat> to see him move, not just move on, but move on with a new family and be happy and be in People Magazine. I'd be mad, even though it's been four years. I don't know about her having love in her life. I mean, I saw her, she appeared on that Bravo dating show um, earlier um, in the year called To Rome With Love. I don't know whether she found love, but clearly she's still chasing the spotlight, is what I'm saying. Whereas he's retired himself into fatherdom and familydom, and, and she, um, she, I guess, still wants to be on TV. It's gotta be hard, though, man. Gina, I feel for you.
So, but they do have two daughters, Patton and Gina. <clears throat> the daughters are 29 and 23. So now the daughters have a little brother, right? So here's what you do, Gina. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry. You've got to fix your face. Don't let them see you sweat. Don't talk bad about that family. Don't talk bad about him, not even in front of your daughters, but your daughters are gonna be your best weapon because this is what you do. You encourage the daughters to go over and see their little brother and their father. And then they'll come back because they're 23 and 29. And kids love mom before they love dad anyway. Right? <clears throat> They'll come back and tell you. <laughs> Mommy, your living room is so much better than hers. <laughs> she can't decorate for nothing. And then Gina, you say, shut your mouth. Stop talking like that. <laughs> and, and, and then they'll say, but mom, I'm just saying. And also, she's not a good cook at all. <laughs> or, you know, you know, let your daughters do all your investigative work. While you keep the stone face, you know, all right, the new issue of People Magazine hits newsstands today. Mm -hmm. Again, I forgot to moisturize. Do we have a little gold wand close by? A little something? Ugh. When I jump up from the chair, I like to shake hands and greet my co-host. And who likes a hard hand? Mm. Thank you, Gold Bond. Mm. So, do you watch Bridezilla? Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> I love this story. There's a Bridezilla, her name is Penny, and she's claiming to have secretly fattened up her sisters before her wedding, so she... <laughs> this is brilliant. This, no, this is brilliant. Uh-huh. Brilliant, Penny. So, so they wouldn't outshine her at her own wedding. Now here's what she would do. Every day she would make her sisters healthy shakes. Uh-huh. But she was putting weight gain powder protein in the shakes. <laughs> That's brilliant, brilliant. Here's the deal. Both sisters had to have their dresses let out before the big day. But my thought is, don't you know when you've gained three pounds? Yeah. Even three. Like for me, it's when I can't twist my, um, do this down here. Rambo, get this shot down here. When I can't give you the full twistation of my ankle situation. Yeah, that, that's when I know, uh-oh, what's going on, thighs? Wh what's happening? But, um, don't you know when you get out of the shower and you look at yourself in your most vulnerable state? Right, Blondie? You know, you know. And I definitely, uh, I blame the sisters. And Penny, by the way, that is a great plan. Don't try that at home, but if you do, call, call me and let me know how it worked out. <laughs> We've got more great show, everybody. Up next. Tom Felicia are here. So, grab a snack and